Hi and welcome to another 5 minute tip. In this tip I'd love to talk about one of my favorite Cinema 4D multi-pass features, the object buffer. It's kind of a weird concept, but once you figure it out it makes a lot of sense and you wonder how you got by without it. So let's get started. Here I have one of my uh, abstract wallpapers. It's a cupcake scene. I'm currently rendering it. So I'm going to stop the render. And what we have here is basically just a regular render. I added a chrome-ish sphere to the scene just so we can reflect some stuff. We'll see how that plays out later. And what we have is basically just a flat image. There's sort of a um, blurry background and we've got some depth of field here. It's a progressive render, so it's not quite done yet. And um, we have these cupcakes everywhere, so that's fine. Now. Multipass rendering is really powerful. Let's take a quick look at it. We have here a multipass option. We can turn it on, and there's a couple options for separate lights, shadow correction. I don't think I have many lights in this scene. I have a couple. And uh, what it allows you to do is to almost break your image into multiple regions of effect. Let me show you what I mean. We can add a RGBA image channel, so it adds RGBA image. We can add a global illumination, that's useful. We can add a, um, let's see, what else have we... Um, I guess we can add an illumination channel, we'll see what that does. We can say separate lights all. And uh, if we do this render again, we should see something a lot more rich come out in the picture viewer. So we're looking at the second render right now. And in the layer tab, we see we have a few things here. We have global illumination, illumination, background, light, light one. And so right now we're calculating the GI pass. And I'm just going to let this magically finish rendering. And we'll talk about it. So once the real render starts, you can start to see things here in the multiple passes. If I click single pass, and I click global illumination, you see only the GI information. If I click this light, you see only the areas that are being shadowed, specular, and diffused by that light. You can see the specular highlights, the diffuse areas, and you can see the specular for these two lights is a little bit different really useful if you wanted to take this stuff into Photoshop and play around with it. Similarly, we have an illumination channel and we have a background or like we mentioned before, just the global illumination. So this is really powerful. But what if you wanted to tweak just the cupcakes or just the sphere? What would you do? Well, let's go back to the main image that's rendering and let's go to the history tab and just press escape and stop it. What we're going to do now is add a couple of object buffers. Here's how these work. The cloner is where all my cupcakes are. So I'm going to add a compositing tag to the cloner. And I'm going to add it to buffer 1. Then I'm going to add a compositing tag to my sphere. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to apply it to buffer 2. So we have buffer 1 and buffer 2, these two separate objects. Next thing we need to do is we need to go to our multi-pass. We need to add an object buffer for one. And we can add another object buffer, this time for number two. So we have two object buffers as passes. I think you can probably guess what's going to happen. We're going to do the render again. We have a third render this time. And we're going to keep an eye on the layers. And we have object buffer one, object buffer two. So once again, I'm going to let this render, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay, so our render is going along again. And this time, if we go to single pass and view some of these passes, we see the global illumination again. See the individual lights, just like last time. But now we have object buffer 1 and object buffer 2. Now, notice that it doesn't actually show you what's in the reflections. It only actually shows you the space the objects occupy. That's the reason I made the sphere reflective. I wanted to kind of 
uh, emphasize that point. But what you basically have is you have an alpha channel here representing the geometry of the cupcakes. And then you have another alpha channel representing the geometry of the sphere. Now it's interesting to note that the geometry of the cupcakes is occluded by the geometry of the sphere and vice versa. The geometry of the sphere is occluded by the cupcakes. So if your scene wasn't completely reflective and you wanted to make small tweaks to the geometry in your scene after you've rendered it, this kind of, this kind of thing can actually help you using an object buffer in a multi-pass rendering setup. So that's it. Just a quick tip on the object buffer and how it works and maybe how it can help you in the future. So until next time, see ya.